Hey, good morning once again, FCF. We're going to pick up in Philippians chapter 3. We're going to finish out the chapter today. Let's start in with verse 20. We're going to just look at verse 20 and 21. Now, to give you a little context, he had been talking about individuals who were identifying with the Christian community, verse 17 through 19, but their conduct proved that they were not actually followers of Christ. Uh, in fact, they were giving a contrary message by their lifestyle to the influence <clears throat> that the cross of Christ, the full revelation of God's sacrificial love, was meant to have. That revelation of God is meant to win our trust and break the power of sin in our life. It was not having that. So these people were running around, identifying as Christians, but still living sinfully. Probably they were saying things like, well, it doesn't matter. Nobody's perfect. You know, we're just forgiven. You know, we're just all waiting for God to, to change us. So Paul is going to contrast those individuals now in verse uh, 20 and 21 with those that are authentic followers of Christ. He says, but our citizenship, meaning we that are real followers of Christ, our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will, will future tense, transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. First part, he says, our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there. So Paul is saying that that first group of people who mouthed identification with Christ but were living just like everybody else on earth, self-preservation, self-gratification, just kind of living to, to bring as much pleasure to themselves as they could, avoid as much pain. They weren't authentically following Christ. Paul says the protocols, the rules, the, the laws, the principles that rule us are those that heaven. So this is really important. A Christian is one that has caught the vision of the beauty of the life that God himself lives and the way that God himself loves. And so we, because we have had our hearts won over by the beauty of the way God lives and the way that he loves, we start living that way now. We don't wait until we get to heaven. Once we've seen the beauty of the heavenly life, we start living under, as it were, the rules. Paul calls it the citizenship of heaven. Now, now he is making a point that our real home, uh, the place of our real destiny, is this place where God's will is done in the heart and life of everyone and everything. Uh, the citizen of, we're citizens of heaven. But his emphasis is that we are already living by the laws, if you want to look at it in that way, the laws of heaven, not the laws of earth. Hence, when we read things like, you know, don't repay uh, evil for evil or insult for insult, it's because we're citizens of heaven. That's not the way heaven functions. It's not the way God functions. So in this life, we are meant to uh, embrace living the way that God himself lives and learning to love the way that he himself loves. Now then he adds on this special part. He says, but we're a people that we're, we're fixated on a hope. We are hoping for the second intervention of God in Christ in human history. He says, we're, we're waiting eagerly for a savior to return, meaning the, the second coming of Christ. And he says, when he returns, he's going to take these physical bodies of ours and transform these physical bodies like unto his glorious body, meaning the physical body that Jesus had when he rose from the dead. You could remember he, he could um, walk through walls with no problem. He could ascend into heaven in a cloud. He could also eat fish with his buddies. In John chapter 21, we see him doing that. But these resurrection bodies, I, I think that when we finally receive those, which we receive those when Christ returns in the second coming, uh, that's going to be a shocker to us. I, I think that so many of the things that we've gotten used to in these particular uh, or our present tense physical bodies and with all their limitations and all their aches and pains and so forth, we're just going to be shocked at how good it can feel to be in a body that is totally healthy, to have brains that are now completely turned on and able to contemplate things that perhaps now we're not quite able to contemplate and remember things that we can't remember and so forth. But this is our promise. We're people that we live with a future hope and we so count on that hope that we are investing our entire life. We, we are following Jesus fully. We're following him freely. We're going to follow him forever because we believe that this society where everyone lives the way God lives and everyone loves the way God loves, that it exists. And we don't feel that we fit 
that we don't fit anywhere else. And so we live with this hope burning inside of us, motivating us daily, enabling us to live a different quality of life than the everyday folks in this world without being discouraged by the evil that frankly is, is growing uh, in leaps and bounds e even in the past three to five years that we've all experienced here in this country but also around the world. So anyway, we're citizens of heaven. We should start living like it now. And those that love Christ and trust Him, they do. And we have this hope, man, that someday our Lord is going to intervene again, but not as a baby. He's coming as King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, and we'll pick it up in chapter 4.